social change has to start with each one of us. It's not somebody that's going to come down and wave a magic wand and make everything fine in this world. The only way that the change that we all know is possible for us as human beings is going to happen is by each one of us really deciding to get to know ourselves as we really are and to take responsibility for playing our part in creating this society. And that's exactly what I found um, in Balanced View is a support network that allows me to see myself more and more clearly and to really make decisions about how I'm going to live my life. And the fundamental basis of the training is really becoming familiar with the open intelligence that is your true identity. And to introduce yourself to open intelligence is very simple. You just need to stop thinking for a moment. Just to relax the train of thought, just for a moment. Allow yourself to notice what's looking. Something that's aware of the next thought that pops into your head. There's an intelligence that's naturally present. It doesn't need things to look in any particular way. And once you begin to identify this in yourself, then all that's needed is a very simple instruction set that allows you to integrate it into your everyday life. And that's actually what the four mainstays are. Um, when I came to this training, um, I didn't think I was looking for anything. I certainly wasn't looking um, for an organisation or a support structure or anything like that. I thought I was doing all right. And in many ways I, I was. But as I became more familiar with myself and began to see more and more clearly the ways in which I was relating to myself and to other people, then um, I began to also see the many ways in which life was difficult and painful and that there were things about myself that I really didn't want to look at. There were relationships with other people that I found incredibly challenging. There were a whole series of assumptions I'd made about who I was that deeply affected the way that I lived my life. And as I became more familiar with open intelligence, then these assumptions and these conventional ideas just became more and more obvious. And the ways in which they affected my life became more and more obvious. So the four mainstays really are this support network that when I came to this training, I had the idea that, well, either you know, I'm living my life or I'm relying on the four mainstays. And it seemed to be like two separate things. But what I've seen is that actually I can just carry on with my everyday life and the four mainstays are just a way to integrate this basic instinctive recognition as to who I really am into that everyday life. So it's not an either or situation. And really getting to know myself is really allowing myself to be exactly as I am in each moment. Exactly as I am. And I had been taught that there were certain things about myself that I really shouldn't be feeling. And those are things like anger, like irritation, like embarrassment, like shame, um, like fear. All, all of these kinds of descriptions that I'd labelled negative or um, afflictive. And these are the ones that I shouldn't be feeling and I needed to find some way to manage them. And um, I developed all kinds of ways of, of managing these feelings, all kinds of strategies, depending on, on what the feeling was and what the situation was. Um, people that made me angry, one strategy was just to get the hell away from them. Um, places that um, I found difficult to be in, I would avoid going to at all costs. Um, all kinds of feelings and all kinds of strategies. Um, the feeling of uh, the fear of being hurt by someone may, meant that I built up all of these defences around um, relating, both in intimate relationships and, and in all other kinds of relationships. You know, the fear about what other people would think of me and what other people would say about me. All, all of these ideas, and my, my life was based on all of these assumptions about what I should feel and what I shouldn't feel and what was acceptable for me to experience and what wasn't. And with the, the, the first mainstay is the instruction just to take short moments of allowing everything to be exactly as it is. So that's what a short moment is. 
Um, sometimes some people find it useful to think of it as a short moment of just relaxation or a short moment of complete openness or a short moment of, of serenity. It, it really doesn't matter what you, what you call it, but it's a short moment of just allowing whatever you're feeling right here and right now just to be as it is without trying to do anything with it. And this is so powerful because what it shows us in our own direct experience is that whatever we're feeling is actually fine. And more than that, when we avoid these feelings like <clears throat> anger, for example, it's such a powerful feeling. Now, when you feel angry, you really feel angry. You can feel that tension and energy in your body. You feel it in your whole being. You know, it's like this fire. And when I try and do something with it in the conventional sense, that would be either indulging it, so then you know, I'd have to go and shout at the person that was making me angry. Um, you know, indulging in that data, really giving it a power over me. And although that might provide some temporary relief, you know, the feeling is, it's, it's, I mean, that's a horrible feeling, you know, when you've acted out on your anger. You know, you, even if it's justified or you feel it's justified, it's, it, it just... You know, it's just you know that, that that is just such an unpleasant way to live life, and there's a deep sense of this is not what I want to be doing with my with my time and my energy, and yet we find ourselves doing it. Um, another way to deal with it would be to um, avoid it, um, and you know that's a strategy. Maybe we we avoid certain people or certain places that bring up this anger, or certain groups of people, or um, another kind of avoidance would be to go and live somewhere, you know, very isolated, where we don't have to deal with many people, because other people bring up these feelings in us. And although these strategies have some kind of success, they only provide a temporary kind of relief. So no matter what you do, the anger or the irritation or the boredom <coughs> or the sadness always comes back. So it's like this treadmill we're on, of constantly trying to do something with these difficult sensations. But no matter how hard we run on the treadmill, we never get anywhere. Because they just come back again and again. But this is the education that we've had. This is the education that we've had in how we manage our lives and you know, who we are and what our, our minds are and how they work. Now when you actually allow yourself to feel the anger without doing anything with it, that power, that energy, that complete sense of... Um, dynamism that you feel in every fibre of your being is just this raw energy. It's not something that can take you down. It's not something that is a sign of anything other than the brilliant shining of open intelligence. The labelling, the descriptions, the stories we have around it seem to make it into something that we need to be afraid of or we need to manage or we need to avoid. But when we allow ourselves to feel it in all of these all of these feelings, there's this raw power. And this is the, the, the vitality of the universe itself. So all of these things are power charged. And once we begin to see ourselves as these wide open clear <coughs> beings, and that nothing about us is a sign of us being wrong or flawed, then that an energy becomes completely transformed. And there's nothing about yourself that you're not capable of feeling from this completely stable, wide open expanse. Absolutely nothing. There's no description that really holds this, this power over us once we allow ourselves to feel it. But that can feel quite um, daunting at the beginning. Or, you know, what is going to happen when I allow this anger just to be there? Uh, how, how's that going to be for me? But this is where the, the short moments come into their own. So it's a short moment of allowing yourself just to be with that anger without doing anything with it, without even describing it. And in that way, you test out for yourself what happens when you do that. Just, just touch in. Touch in with open intelligence and allow the anger to be there and see what happens. You don't have to take anyone's word for it. You find out for yourself. And in these short moments, you discover that open intelligence is the basis of all of these ex experiences, of all of these descriptions that all of them are contained within this vast expanse, that none of them affect this wide open clear nature of mind. No matter how much we've been telling ourselves there are things about us that we shouldn't feel, that are signs of us being wrong in some way. When we actually face them just for a short moment, 
And all of that description, all of that assumption, it, it, just, it just crumbles, it dissolves, because we see for ourselves that that is just not the case. And when we can face these things, and that energy is transmuted into pure benefit, we have such power as human beings. You know, such power. I know for myself that I'd, I'd, I'd always known that, but that in itself had brought up lots of, um, lots of data. You know, I'd known that I had such power in the world that I could do, you know, I could be of so much benefit to so many people, but that was kind of scary. Like, bloody hell, you know, is that something I can really cope with? And so this, this training up process of stepping into this, this power of great benefit is again where the support network of the Four Mainstays is just invaluable. So being in touch with your trainer will allow you to explore these assumptions about yourself in a completely safe space. The trainer will only ever point you back to how brilliant you've always been. And, and that's the power of this support network, being with a group of people who are also deeply committed to recognizing themselves as open intelligence and expressing this beneficial power. It, it's so inspiring and it's actual demonstration of what it means to live as open-hearted human beings. I, I'd never been around groups of people that were like that before. I'd had glimpses of it in different situations, but never this consistent way of living with each other, with just total open-heartedness and total support, you know, total love, with all of your stuff going on, with all of the data raging, but not being a victim to the data. Open intelligence and this interconnectivity that is obvious when we allow ourselves to be exactly as we are, that's the basis of all interactions. This is the society that's built when each of us takes this responsibility for relying on open intelligence. This is the only way that this social change that is so needed in the world is going to come about. I mean, that's why, you know, here in, in this place there's so much interest in this training because people deeply care. Each of you deeply cares. You know, you want the best for yourself, you want the best for your, your families and your children and you want the best for the world. Now, everything you're doing is geared towards that. But this is the most fundamental education that then provides a platform to, to engage in whatever you're interested in from a completely different perspective. You'll see the assumptions that are made in whatever sphere of interest you're interested in. You'll be able to transcend those. But without seeing them, it's impossible to transcend them. And so to open intelligence provides this keen insight into each situation. Provides you with a, a, a depth of intelligence and a, just a, 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 an overview, a perspective that's impossible when all we see are the descriptions about what we're thinking and what we're feeling about something. It includes all of those, but is not bound by any of them. And in each short moment, that's what you get used to the breadth of your intelligence, the wide open expanse of your mind. And this, this power that we have is also to be found there. This is the power to speak up when we need to speak up. This is the power to remain completely, completely stable and at ease, even when someone is saying something critical and sarcastic. But it also provides us the power to, to really to say something when something needs to be said about that. You know, because there are things going on in the world and in our society and in our everyday lives that are just not acceptable. So it's not becoming passive. We become firm and strong and clear and completely open-hearted and loving. But that loving doesn't mean being, you know, completely um, passive or completely uh, like a doormat. You know, we really become this, this dynamic energy of the universe not bound by any of these descriptions we've had about ourselves and what we're capable of, capable of saying or doing. We rely on this open intelligence and you, you will surprise yourself again and again with just exactly how clear and powerful you can be in a completely uncontrived way. Because that's who you've always been. Now you're just recognizing it and touching in with that again and again.